Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of liver cancer. More specifically, we'll be discussing the primary liver cancer known as hepatocellular carcinoma. Before we talk about the signs and symptoms, let's discuss some of the important functions of the liver and also some risk factors for getting liver cancer. So the liver is an organ located in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, so it's on the right side above the belly button. It is responsible for hundreds of essential bodily processes. So there's too many to name here, but some of them include the fact that it's involved in producing clotting factors. It's involved in producing albumin for oncotic pressure and other functions. It's involved in detoxification processes. It's also involved in activation of certain vitamins. So it has a lot of different functions. Now, some of the risk factors for getting liver cancer include the following. Cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis is actually going to be one of the biggest risk factors for getting liver cancer. Upwards of 80% of patients with cirrhosis of the liver will end up developing liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma at some point in their life. We can also see alcoholic liver disease. So conditions like alcoholic hepatitis, simply because of chronic inflammatory processes, this can increase the risk of hepatocellular carcinoma as well. Having MASLD or metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, which is the new name for non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This can also be another risk factor. Having infections with hepatitis B and C, C, especially hepatitis C, because this can be a chronic infection leading to an increased risk of liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma, and even aflatoxin exposure due to aspergillus species. This is going to be more common in certain parts of the world. Now, hepatocellular carcinoma is going to be the fifth most common cancer globally. It has a male to female ratio of three to one, so males are going to outnumber females three to one. And with regards to the causes in the Western world, for instance, we're seeing a large increase in number of individuals who, because of being overweight and obese and having type 2 diabetes, are more likely to have metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And this is actually going to be the leading cause in the Western world. Now let's discuss some of the signs and symptoms of hepatocellular carcinoma or liver cancer. So a lot of times it's going to be asymptomatic because a lot of times we're going to catch it on screening. So if a patient has cirrhosis, they're going to have regular screenings over time, and that's often going to be the time when they can catch liver cancer on imaging, for instance. So in those cases, they can get caught before the patient starts to experience symptoms. Now, if it's not caught on screening and it does develop signs and symptoms, what are some of the symptoms that can occur? Some of them include weight loss, so it's often going to be unexplained and unintentional. So the patient's not trying to lose weight. They just simply lose weight. And it's going to be oftentimes unexplained. You're not entirely sure why. They may be eating the same amount, but they're still losing weight. The reason is because the cancer steals nutrients. There's also some increased inflammatory cytokines that can lead to what we call cachexia. So kind of a thinning down loss of muscle mass. And one of the important inflammatory cytokines that can do this is TNF-alpha. And this again can lead to muscle wasting. So there can be a thinning down, weight loss, and also muscle wasting as well. We can also see anorexia occurring with hepatocellular carcinoma. So anorexia is going to be a loss of appetite. The reason is because there's oftentimes reduced ghrelin signaling. So ghrelin is a hormone that signals to us that we're hungry, that we want to eat. It increases our appetite. But in liver cancer, we get a reduced ghrelin signaling. We can also have what we call early satiety. So early satiety is feeling full quicker. So even if you had an appetite, you might start eating, you start to get full very quickly. The reason is because of what we call splenomegaly. So megaly means enlarged and spleno or spleno refers to the spleen. So you might be wondering why an enlarged spleen can cause you to feel full quicker. It's because your spleen is on the left side of your body. So if we're looking directly in the patient here, this is the spleen, it's enlarged in this image. And the stomach's also in and around the same area. So with an enlarged spleen, we have the spleen pushing on the stomach. It doesn't allow the stomach to open up as much. It makes you feel full quicker. And the reason that you can have splenomegaly with liver cancer is because if there is a tumorous mass in the liver, for instance, you can get what we call portal hypertension. So high blood pressure in the portal system. The portal vein is the vein that goes into the liver and it also has a branch toward the spleen. So because of that, there's a lot of blood backed up, leading to a very enlarged spleen. So this is the reason why we can get splenomegaly. We can also see fatigue and malaise in patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. So fatigue is less energy. They feel more tired. Malaise is a general feeling of unwell. So they just don't feel well. They feel weaker than usual. They can also have somnolence. So they can just feel very, very tired. 
And this is often going to be due to multiple factors. Some of it has to do with what we call hyperammonemia, which is a high level of ammonia in the blood. This can occur when the detoxification function of the liver is impaired. We start to get an elevation of ammonia, and this can lead to not only fatigue and just a general feeling of unwell, but it can lead to another symptom we'll discuss later on, and also some cancer-related changes in cytokines. Certain inflammatory cytokines can make you feel quite unwell and tired as well. Some other signs and symptoms include a fever. Oftentimes, the fever is going to be mild. This can be related to the cancer itself. It can be those inflammatory cytokines we talked about before. There can be an infection. You may have an underlying infection going on, or it could be related to what we call a perineoplastic syndrome. Sometimes cancers will produce hormones or other compounds that will lead to a different manifestation in the body somewhere else. That is what perineoplastic syndrome is, and a fever can be something that can occur in hepatocellular carcinoma. Nausea is also another potential finding in hepatocellular carcinoma. So it can occur, it's likely due to increased toxin levels from a decreased toxification function of the liver. We can also get other findings, including pruritus. Pruritus is going to be a generalized itching sensation. You feel itchier than usual. And this can occur due to blockage of biliary ducts leading to a buildup of bile salts, which can lead to pruritus. So why does this happen? So if you look in this image here, we don't see it here, but the liver is located here. There are different biliary ducts that originate from the liver. The liver produces bile and bile salts. The bile gets stored in the gallbladder for concentration purposes. But if there's some cancer in the liver blocking those biliary ducts, blocking the transport of bile from the liver to the gallbladder and beyond, then we can get a buildup of bile and bile salts and bile salts can then spill out into the blood. And as those bile salts go through the body, through the blood, we can get itching sensations from that buildup or that spilling out of bile salts in the blood. So this is the reason why we can get pruritus. Now, another important finding in liver cancer is ascites. So ascites is an abdominal swelling. It's a swelling up of the abdomen due to large amounts of peritoneal fluid. And oftentimes this is going to be due to what we talked about before, that portal hypertension. As the portal vein goes into the liver, if there's a lot of friction in the liver due to tumorous masses, or even in cirrhosis, for instance, in decompensated cirrhosis, we're going to have higher blood pressures in the portal system, leading to portal hypertension. And this is going to cause a backup of fluid. And one of those places is the abdomen. And we start to get a spilling out of peritoneal fluid in the peritoneal space. So it's all this fluid built up in the abdominal cavity. And then again, also we had that splenomegaly that can also occur from this as well. And second, part of this is that the liver, as we mentioned before, produces albumin. So albumin helps to pull fluid back into blood vessels. So if we don't have enough albumin, then we don't get that function of albumin to essentially act as a sponge to hold onto fluid in the blood vessels. So we then get more fluid that is spilled out into certain spaces, and one of those spaces is the abdominal cavity. Liver cancer can also cause pain as well. It's often going to be described as a discomfort. You can get this discomfort right upper quadrant pain. Again, this is the location of the liver itself. This is when the growth of the tumor has grown to start to touch on, irritate what we call Glisson's capsule. So Glisson's capsule is a fibrous capsule that surrounds the liver. This is where there are pain receptors. And when you have that cancer growing out of the liver and pushing on Glisson's capsule, then you start to get pain. Oftentimes, we're going to see this in advanced disease. We can also see hepatomegaly occurring in liver cancer. So megaly, again, means enlarged. Hepat or hepato refers to liver, so it's an enlarged liver. So you can see something like this, a big abdominal mass in the right upper quadrant. It may feel like some fullness or abdominal fullness, and this is, again, due to increased size of the cancerous mass. We can also see in some patients hepatic encephalopathy occurring. So hepatic encephalopathy is an effect on the brain due to hyperammonemia or those high ammonia levels we talked about before. Some of the effects on the brain can include personality changes, short-term memory issues, so their memory, their short-term memory especially is impaired. You can also see asterixis or this hand flapping tremor as it's called. So oftentimes what the clinician will do is they'll get the patient to put their hands and arms straight out in front of them with their hands up like this in this position. They'll get the patient to close their eyes and then when they close their eyes they will have these intermittent losses of that position where their hand will drop down and then it'll immediately come back up. So that is that hand flapping tremor. That's asterixis. 
We can also see impaired cognition, impaired handwriting, drowsiness, and slurring of speech in later stages of hepatic encephalopathy. We can also see jaundice in some patients as well. Jaundice is a yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes, and if it's in the eyes, it's called scleral icterus. This is, again, due to biliary ducts becoming obstructed, so bilirubin can be excreted through the biliary ducts into the gastrointestinal system. If the biliary ducts are impacted or obstructed, then we can get a buildup of bilirubin and a yellowing of the skin and whites of the eyes. So again, when those biliary ducts are obstructed, bilirubin starts to back up, spills out into the blood instead of going into the gastrointestinal system. As it goes through the blood, it binds to elastin in the skin and the sclera of the eyes. So this is why we get jaundice. Now, those are some of the main symptoms of liver cancer or hepatocellular carcinoma, but we can also see what we call those perineoplastic syndromes again. So the liver cancer is producing certain compounds that end up leading to other signs and symptoms around the body. Some of these include erythrocytosis. Erythrocytosis is a high red blood cell count, so it becomes abnormally high. We can also see hypercalcemia or high level of calcium in the blood. You can also see hypoglycemia or a low glucose level. And in some cases, we can also see skin findings like lesser trilocine, dermatomyositis, and some others as well. And then finally, I'll briefly talk about where liver cancer generally will metastasize. So some of the places that a primary liver cancer like hepatocellular carcinoma will metastasize to include the lungs, the adrenal glands, intra-abdominal nodes, and the spine and central nervous system, or CNS, so it will go to the bones. So these are some of the locations where hepatocellular carcinoma will metastasize to. If you want to learn more about hepatocellular carcinoma and how it's diagnosed and treated, please check my full lesson on that topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Please also consider joining as a member for members-only content. Thanks so much for watching, and hope to see you next time.